This video is gonna be a brief crash course in all the things that I've built into my build of the simple terminal, ST. Um, first off, I should say, I know there are a lot of you guys who actually use my terminal build or something pretty close to it. Just in case you don't know, if you're an Arch user or using any other Arch-based distribution, you are actually able to get my build of ST from the AUR. It's just st-luke-git. It's out there. Um, if you're not an Arch user, you can just get it from my GitHub. It's going to be in the video description. But I'm going to show you some of the basic binds of it for those of you who are who are already using it, but also some of the extra features I've built in and other just nice little things, I guess. So at a very basic level, let's say you're minding your own business, you're running commands in your terminal, I don't know, what are, what are your favorite commands, who knows. Um, there are a couple binds that you, you basically are going to want in any kind of terminal, and I like having them on the home row, I like having Vim bindings. So for example, if I scroll up, a lot of people will use the mouse for something like that, that's annoying. I like having Alt K and Alt J, that is for scrolling up and scrolling down. Nice Vim bindings. Or if you want to scroll up a little higher, uh, you can use, uh, uh, what is it, Alt U for up and Alt D for down. Those are just, those are Vim bindings originally. So that's what I have to scroll up and down. Additionally, you'll notice that um, the text in my terminal is actually a little big. That's because you can change the font size of this terminal by holding down Alt Shift and then same buttons as scrolling up and down. J and K, the only difference is you're holding down shift now. So if I want to make this smaller, press J. If I want to make it bigger, press K. <coughs> Sorry, coronavirus. It's all over the place here. Um, so in addition to that, what, what other kind of bindings do we have? So again, let's rerun some commands. One thing that I actually worked into my build around a year ago, uh, this was actually a suggestion of a subscriber. We worked on it one night, I don't know, probably a year ago. If you Let's say you want to copy the output of one of your commands. Let's say it's a really big command or a command that you can't just rerun or easily highlight. Well, one thing I've built into my terminal uh, with, again, the help of this subscriber is if I press Alt-O, what it does is it actually gives me a list of all my previous commands. And if I select one of those, let's say this most recent Pac-Man hyphen Q, what I can do is I can go somewhere else. It has copied that to my clipboard. So I can copy in the output of that command. And you'll see it has the entire command from the original line to all the stuff that it printed out. So that's a pretty nice feature if you need to copy the output of something that you can't do. You, you know, let's say it's a command you can't rerun and pipe into xclip or something. Uh, that's a nice little feature to have. Um, additionally, let's talk about one other thing you occasionally need on your terminal is the ability to copy or follow links, URL links. So as an example, I'm going to uh, cat out, uh, let's see, local source website. I'm going to cat out the uh, HTML page of my website. Okay, there it all is. And this is just an example. You might have some kind of uh, link to something on um, you know on the command line and you need to copy it. Now some terminals you'll click on them, some terminals you have to highlight in them, copy them. Uh, I like having a nice little D menu prompt, so here's what I do. I hold down Alt, press L, and it gives me a list. What it does is it looks through all your terminal output. It gives you a list of all those URLs and you can just select one of them, type one in, whatever. Let's say I wanna follow the GitHub link. So I'm gonna start typing that in, uh, press Enter to follow and uh, it's gonna bring that up. So you will see in just a second, my internet is terrible, but here it is. Here's the link we followed. Actually, let's go to my ST build, because why not? Because that's what we're talking about in this video. So that again is, um, that again is Control L. Um, additionally, actually, let me go back. Oh, let's go back to uh, and cat out the, um, website page again. In addition to following output, you can also just press Alt Y and that will just give you a list of URLs that you might want to copy. So let's say we'll copy this link and I can go over somewhere else and paste it in just to verify. If you don't want to actually follow it, you just want to put it in something else. That's something that works as well. Okay, so we talked about font size. We've talked about going up and down, scrolling. Another thing is if you actually do have to copy some specific thing, um, let's say we just wanna copy that, you press Alt-C, that is now copied. I can go somewhere else, let's say my browser, and I can paste that in 
uh, all that stuff we ju that we just copied. Um, now, of course, for those of you who are new to the command line on a Unix-based operating system, no terminal is going to have control V and control C for like copying and pasting and stuff like that because those bindings are already used by other functions, right? Control C is always gonna be stop a command. It's never gonna be copy. So that's why I have Alt C uh, bound here. Uh, if you wanna paste, uh, you press Alt V to paste that in or also Shift Insert. I have that bound as well. That's uh, sometimes a little more common. A lot of other people use Control Alt something. I just like Alt C, Alt V, that works for me. So. That, yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, so those are the basic bindings of my build. So I should say, what are the other features uh, that I've put in it? Now, again, I should say for a lot of these features I've put in, uh, one of the big ones that I'm gonna show in just a second is X resources. So X resources is the ability for you to set, set it, let's say you wanna change your colors or change some other data about, or variables used by your terminal. Um, X resources is a nice way to do that. But if you want to go to the Suckless site, you can have a full list of all the patches you can add in yourself if you're, you, you know, if you don't want to use my build. It's usually advised to make your own build if you really want to figure out what's going on, of course. If you really want to abide by the Suckless philosophy, but, you know. Anyway, so what I mean by X resources is I have an X resources file and I list out some variables here. Let's say, for example, transparency, okay? So right now my transparency is set at 0.8, that is 80% uh, non or opaque, so 20% transparency. Just to be clear, if I replace that with 100%, which is of course one, and I run the xrdb command, I have it run automatically in Vim when I save this file, but you gotta run this command uh, to update it. Now I pull up a terminal, and you'll notice that this one is transparent, but this one on the right, or on the left, excuse me, has no transparency whatsoever, okay? That's because I changed alpha to one. Let's say I change it to zero. Now all the terminals I'll bring up will be totally transparent, okay? So these two ter terminals I just brought up, totally transparent. Sort of hard to see, but it's an option. Uh, but anyway, X resources, the reason this is nice is by default, ST has no config file. Config files in general, they sort of, they're against the suckless mindset. They don't like having them for different reasons. But the nice thing about X resources is you can set settings, but you can also set them for multiple programs. So let's say you wanna have a color scheme in common with um, you know, ST and uh, DWM. Here's my window manager. It actually uses X resources as well, or D menu or just other programs in general. You can set them in X resources and that's a nice thing. It's not a, as bloated as having a separate config file for each one. It's a nice thing to have. Um, additionally, you know, we've got some obvious stuff here. If I want to change my font size, I can. Uh, but also I keep commented in here a bunch of different color schemes. Let's say I wanted to change to grub grub box light, okay? Well, I just uncomment this color scheme and again, run XRDB on this file. And when I pull up my next terminal, well, look at that. Now it is grub box light, nice. Okay, so I have a couple color schemes in here like that, just in case I wanted to, uh, you know, change the one of these. Well, I'll say I'll change to this one, right? Uh, oops, did I get rid of that transparency? Yeah, okay. So I'll change to that one. You'll see we'll have, uh, what is it, Dracula, whatever that was. Yeah, Dracula, okay. Um, in addition to that, so if you don't know, X Resources is also used by uh, Pywall, uh, which if you don't know what Pywall is, it's basically this program where it auto generates a color scheme based on a uh, any kind of image you give it. Okay, so I'm gonna give it my current background. So here's my current background. If I give that to wall, uh, what you what it is gonna do is it's gonna auto generate a color scheme based on that and it's gonna use that in X resources. And since my ST build is built in to read X resources, it can now read that. So now if I pull up a new, new terminal, you're, you're going to see that it has this color scheme that is similar uh, to my background, right? So, and a lot of people will change, they'll use Pywall to go through, uh, you know, to generate color schemes all the time. So it's nice having a build of ST or your terminal build in general that can easily read this. Um, but I'm going to resave this so it overwrites the uh, wall color scheme. Um, all right, so let's see, I think that's about it. Um, but I will talk about, let's talk about the more hardcore, well actually, no, there's one more thing I need to say. 
uh, that's important. And then maybe we'll talk about more hardcore stuff, okay? Uh, so first off, I did a video a couple weeks ago on getting uh, emojis, colored emojis in ST. Now you might say, well, what's the point of that? I mean, what, what's the big deal about that? Well, the issue was a lot of suckless philosophy uh, or software a while ago um, was dealing with a problem that was in a font configuration library and they were, they are unable to render color emojis. So there's a little fix for that. And what it is, is, uh, well for right now, it's, I mean, hopefully it's eventually going to be fixed in the upstream, but right now the thing you want to do is install this package lib XFT BGRA from the AUR. And if you install that, you will be able to see color emojis. So I am just going to verify that I can do that by pulling this up, okay? So one thing that you will uh, want to do if you, well, first off, you'll wanna install that so you ST doesn't crash when it sees color emojis because that would be what it did otherwise. Um, but in addition, one thing that I've built into my build for the time being, and that is until this is totally fixed, is I actually have multiple font sets. So I have, by default, my um, font is a monospace font of size 14, 14 point font. Um, but additionally, I have a fallback font and that is my joy pixels font, which is the emoji font of size 10. And that is you want to have the emojis a lot smaller than your characters because some emojis in ST, um, let's say if I have a really big, well, it doesn't, let's say I make this really big. You'll see that eventually the emojis will sort of bleed into the next emoji next to it. You'll see how it's sort of cut off right here, okay? Um, so that's why you wanna have the emojis just a little bit smaller. Now again, this problem will hopefully be fixed on the upstream, but for those of you who are dealing with this, I know I mentioned having this problem a week or so ago. If you wanna avoid it for the time be being, you can just do that. Um, let's see what else is in here. Now, if you want to uh, reconfigure um, anything in, this, in the build of a suckless program, of course, you know that you want to modify the config.h uh, file. That's what I'm in right now. And it's typical to put all your settings in here. Now, as I said before, a lot of these can actually be read by X resources, colors and stuff like that. Um, even a lot of the, like for example, um, you know, the, the scale of font, you know, let's say you have, you want uh, characters a little wider. Well, you can change the CW scale of them. So they'll take up, they'll be a little further spaced or a little closer in depending on what you want. Uh, there are a lot of settings you can, of course, change in the actual source code of ST. But once you do that, you have to uh, make it and then sudo make install it. Um, that's the important thing. Um, anyway, so I think this is about, I. I've taken up a little more time than I wanted to in this video, but I overviewed the basic binds of ST. Uh, I might talk about my configuration in a little more depth in another video, but this is just to get it out there for those of you who who use my build and want to know the thinking behind some of it. So I hope you learned something, or hope this follow you know encourages you to learn something. And I will see you guys next time.